Hey everyone, this is Sterp, and today's video is all about the book, My Best Friend's Exorcism. I wanna take a moment to recognize that this is probably one of the best covers I have ever seen, ever. I'm gonna be really honest, I was at Barnes & Noble. Yes, I go to all bookstores. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I go to used bookstores, recycled bookstores, and once in a great while, I will go to franchises like Barnes & Noble. I'm a sucker for books in general. I don't care what bookstore it is. I will go in, I will look, shop, buy, not buy. I literally judged this book by its cover. I wasn't even looking for it. And I saw it, I saw the cover, I saw the colors and it just drew me in. I immediately grabbed it and was like, what the hell is this? This looks amazing. Look at this 80s retro everything but this is epic i just absolutely love the cover i fell in love with it immediately i picked it up and turned it around and read the back and then decided to buy it so i'm going to read the back to you this book packs all the magic of a summer horror flick high school sophomores abby and gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong gretchen begins to act dot 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 She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time the story reaches its terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Like an unholy hybrid of Beaches and The Exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. What? If you're not super it just loving it already, then whatever. I bought this book. It's 332 pages long, and I read it within just two to three days. It was epic, and I give it five stars. If you love the 80s, if you love horror, then this is absolutely for you. Grady Hendrix writes each character to perfection. All the, all the, I hate to say tropes, but there are tropes in it. And they, but they're perfectly done. So much so that you do not feel robbed. It's not, uh, it's organically done. Like every piece of it. It's funny. There are some hilarious parts but it's very creepy and eerie. And if you love supernatural and exorcism type of stories, this is your book. Like you need to read it. It is perfect in that sense. And there were parts that were funny. And then there were pieces that I was so thrilled that happened. Scenes that were just great. Everything was on point. And I thought it was well written as well. I was laughing. I thought all the characters were were perfectly written. So the parents, right? Like annoying, when you're in high school, annoying parents who don't get it. They think it's something else. Like the, like you're in your own world when you're in high school, right? When you're a teenager, like you know things your parents don't know. Grady Hendrix does a great job in, in making the reader feel really in tune with these high school girls and like, oh shit, like these parents are idiots. And if they, if only they knew, but they don't, they don't know the truth these girls go to like a Christian religious school and it's hilarious. The assembly scene, the scene with the assembly and the performance, I was laughing out loud. It wasn't cliche. It was almost, but it wasn't because it was so spot on that Grady Hendrix got it right. So it just, it was that great. Now, the deal with this book is, in my opinion, there weren't huge surprises. Like, there, it, it's not the kind of book that has major plot twists or shockers. Like, if you're into exorcism type of stories, it's going to follow the basics of those types of stories. Like, you're not in for some crazy, crazy plot twist. It's gonna be what it is. But I loved it so much. Even going into it, I knew. And the fact that there was a twist of, of high school, adolescent, coming of age, that made it unique. So you get the humor, you get, you do. Like you get that funny side of high school life and that shittiness mixed with horror, mixed with nasty, gross horror and creepy things that occur. I thought it was, 
it was entertaining. So that's the other piece. This is a very entertaining book. I couldn't put it down. I was highly entertained and couldn't stop talking about it. It also had some deep elements too. So I think besides entertaining, besides being uh, for the 80s horror fanatic, the person who likes stories about exorcisms and being possessed, there was such a deep element that came back around at the end to get the reader and just grab them by the heart. And that was about friendship. It was about friendship. Is Like the back of the book says, is this friendship going to be strong enough to overcome the devil and possession? And I'm sorry, but it's true. The very end, it gets you by the heart and you're like, oh, you can't help but think about your best friend. You can't. You're, you're like, oh, you immediately think of your best friend in the whole world. Who's your best friend now? Think of them. There you go. You're going to think of them when you read this book. When you get to the end, you're going to be like, oh my God, my, my best friend. Like, yes, I'd be there for them and I would do this and I would, until the very end, it doesn't matter. I would be the one to help them with this possession. It is a coming of age story, a horror story, being possessed, friendship to the deepest level, like the friends you have until you die. We all have friends that we have until we're on our deathbed. Can you imagine succeeding in that as a writer? All those things I named, horror, coming of age, friendship. I mean, my goodness. And it just goes on till the very end successfully. I do highly recommend this book, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I give it five stars. I'm extremely glad that I found this. And this is just more, um, you know, proving to me as a, as a writer, as a beginning writer, that the cover matters. You should be investing in your work. If you're a writer, invest the money into getting it professionally edited as well as paying for a beautiful cover. You can't just do it alone. You have to save up or figure it out and pay for someone to edit your book and to design your cover because it does matter. Thank you so much for tuning in. I deeply appreciate it and I will see you all soon.